body movements and gestures, uh, having your body totally involved in the telling of the stories. Um, who would like to be first to give us an illustration? Now, just go immediately into the story and use your body and, and uh, your, your hands, your, your facial expression, your, 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 your whole body to tell a part of a story. Back to the back to the lion and the the dung beetle. Oh, lions. Uh, I am the king of the jungle, and everyone will bow to me. Dung beetle, I don't see you bowing. And so, just making your body as yes. large as it can. One thing I've found with body movement. That's one area where I think it can be overdone. And I find that if I once get into the character, if I plant my feet and create that character yeah. and use that body, but don't keep pacing and moving too much, right. for me, That's that right. just doesn't work. Ab absolutely, yes, yes. Well, I'm thinking of uh, a personal story that I tell uh, called Mama's Vacuum Cleaner. One fateful afternoon, the cat came into the living room. She was not a Siamese, but she thought she was. <laughs> Every afternoon, she would strut into the living room and curl up in the one shaft of light that came through the curtains of the picture window. Good. So as she's strutting, of course, I'm using my whole body to, yeah. to show that that lithe movement of the cat. Oh, he anchors all six of his little feet on the side of that horn. He's ready for the ride. The bull leans down and goes after some soft spring grass, but this, it, it throws the Nat's body forward, he arches his back, he uses his antenna for leverage, he's like, yee-haw, ride him, cowboy! With that, the bull brings his head back up, but now it launches the Nat's body the other way and he struggles to stay astride that beast. Nervousness, and of course, we have nervousness as one of the tools that for, for storytelling. But the thing I say is, you never should let nervousness gesture. You need to control it, not have it control your story. What does nervousness look like when it's not done right? Uh, let me give an example that uses the microphone. So, if if a storyteller has to actually hold a microphone like I'm doing right now, and that nervousness starts to show itself, once upon a time there was this um, <laughs> this king who who really wanted to have um, well, you know, he had three sons. There there was the the young son, the the middle son, and, and the really old son. And and um, you see yeah, what I mean? Right, that's right. That's right. I guess. One of my pet peeves, and I guess we all have them here and there, is uh, someone who does the pacing and claims they're using pacing as part of their character. But it is nothing to do with their character. And all it does is make your audience go this way and then go that way and go this. And their energy is all diffused all over the stage. Instead of centering themselves, they um, are using that excess energy and losing their audience at the same time. Yes, yes. And I remember seeing a storyteller. She had long, curly hair, and through the entire story, kept pulling on yes, that hair. Yes. <laughs> so that, and it had nothing to do with the character. It had nothing to do with the story. But she was obviously nervous and just kept pulling on that hair. So any of that, or tugging on the sweaters, tugging on the clothes, but, but that hair thing, that was... And we could probably spend a long time talking about the many different things, but the, but, the, but the key is this, is the fact don't let nervousness gesture. Use it as a tool, but don't let it, uh, don't let it gesture. Okay.